Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. You know, hey, I know people from other countries probably watching this, but I am an American. I'm a patriotic American. But uh, this is one of the best allegories, historical writings I have ever read in my life. And very popular, and by a popular author, Taylor Caldwell, Honoraria. And the thing that is so fascinating as you read it, and I was sitting here like, you know, do, I mean, at some point I would love to just read this and have it on YouTube. I'd probably have to do it in parts because it's like one page, two page, three page, four page, five pages. Some of them are partial pages, but it would take a while. And I don't mind doing it. It's just a matter of time. And there's so many things to discuss. The gospel of Jesus Christ being the primary thing. And the love of God. And who is Jesus Christ? And how do we live for Jesus Christ? But, uh, okay, so Honoraria. This is the story of a once great nation referred to as Honoraria. Honoria. Maybe it's Honoria. The actual identity of the nation and the lessons we can learn from it will become apparent. Um... So here it is, an inhospitable shore. I'll just read just a little bit and tell you a little bit who Taylor Caldwell is, because she was one of, she may have been the best-selling author of the 20th century. I remember like when, when I was growing up, you'd have like, was it the Thornbirds coming on, Captains and Kings? This was all done by Taylor Caldwell. These were massive uh, novels that got turned into like mini series and stuff like that on television. Okay. An inhospitable shore. Oppressed by tyranny, men and women throughout history have fled their homelands and braved the wilds to form new civilizations. Unfortunately, freedom for these pilgrims has often been short lived. Ambition, greed, and vice soon paved the way to slavery. Okay, so this is a true story. This is the beginning of it by Taylor Caldwell. That was just something in here. This is a true story about a nation which was once great. At the outset, we will call that nation Honoraria, Honoria. I don't know how to pronounce it, Honoria. But we will readily guess, you will readily guess her true name as the story unfolds. Once upon a time, some courageous men decided to leave their own country, which did not encourage freedom of religion, freedom of speech, and freedom of the individual. They wanted to establish a new country where men could be free. And I'm sorry, I do get teary-eyed reading this kind of stuff. I apologize. So these men who wanted freedom became pilgrims. They migrated to an uncivilized land inhabited only by barbarians, enduring terrible hardship to get there. When they landed in that savage region, they stood upon a great rock. There they did homage to their God for guiding them through their arduous journey. To this day, that rock is one of the most famous monuments in the world. The Pilgrim Fathers. The Pilgrims weren't very kind to the natives of the region. But kindness is not usually an attribute of the human race, not even among just men earnestly seeking freedom and justice for themselves. They drove off the natives and built their rude shelters in an inhospitable wilderness. I do appreciate the fact she throws that in. You know, They also engaged in flurries of small wars and massacres with the natives and they went armed into the fields to set their crops and take care of their cattle they taught their wives and half-grown children how to handle arms protect themselves when the men are away one of the first things these pilgrims did was to build a house of worship in the wilderness a crude rude house but still a house of worship there they would gather not just on holy days but every day to pray they had a special day in the year too to give thanks for the blessings they would walk through the silent fields and wild forest on that day armed and watchful against the savages the pilgrims were stern and austere men they believed in their god but they also believed in work hard driving determined work they'd established school going on and on and so forth um I like some of these pictures. The road less traveled. Most of humanity has never known freedom. Those fortunate enough to enjoy it have a solemn duty to understand its principles and uphold them. Thomas Jefferson preached that each citizen must work to ensure America remains free, reportedly stating eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. So it goes into the colonies unite. You have colonies, death of the middle class. Um, Honoria joined the League of the World with her enemies. They exploited her. There were ever-growing demands for more foreign aid, more security, more bread, more sports, more government. The middle class finally died. The time had come for the barbarians to take over 
honoraria and destroy civilization. The middle class provides the backbone for a free society. Uh, honoraria collapsed because of the weight of a monstrous state top heavy bureaucracy. Okay. So she goes into all this stuff and, and so like I'm reading it and I'm like, huh? What is the real name of Honoraria? Ancient Rome. You know, Gibbons, the, the fall of the Roman Empire. Great. You know what happened to ancient Rome. The barbarians in the 5th century invaded Rome and destroyed her. And for hundreds of years, there was a long black night of slavery and despair and ruin. Rome had not only betrayed herself, but all the civilized world with her. The barbarians ranged over that civilized world and the cultures of thousands of years were destroyed so that only fragments have come down to us, mere fragments of great mighty literature and law and beauty. Fortunately, one thing did survive, the twelve tables of common Roman law. For that we can thank the early Christian. Those tables of law form the basis of English common law and more indirectly the American Constitution. So when I read that, you know, of course I had to go study that, which is fascinating. Probably worthy of another video, but who's got time? Had Rome retained her constitution, she would have perhaps survived and her splendor would not have been extinguished. But she permitted the slow erosion of her constitution just as we're permitting the quicker erosion of our constitution. Okay. And boy, this is music. See, I cry when I read this stuff. Okay. So let me read this. A couple more things. Nearly 2,000 years stand between us and Rome. Never before the rise of Rome and never since did two nations so remarkably resemble each other in history. In splendid rise in civilization and magnificent communication between nature and grandeur and wealth. In strange and amazing ways we are the counterpart of ancient Rome. Our history, almost step by step, is our history. Um, so long as Rome, Rome remained Rome, patriotic, proud, virtuous, and healthy, she remained a strong and powerful nation. When she became internationalistic, underwrote the economies of other nations, permitted her rulers to become dictators, enmeshed herself with the problems of aliens, and taxed her own people to support these aliens, she began to die. When she became militaristic and had her army spread on foreign soil, the fabric of her life was weakened and strained, and the wild sword of the barbarian cut it easily. It is a stern fact of history that no nation that rushed to the abyss ever turned back. Not ever in the long history of the world. We're at the edge of the abyss. Can we, for the first time in history, turn back? It is up to you. So, amazing. See, I'm for freedom of religion for everybody. I just want freedom everywhere. Uh, just amazing. The Great Rock in Honoria, comparable to Plymouth Rock in American history, was a rock which became the foundation of the Temple of Juniper in ancient Rome. I did want to say that. Okay, good stuff. Honoraria, Taylor Caldwell. You know, and her, of her captains and kings, she wrote some amazing stuff. Kind of tells how the world works. I'll talk with you later. God bless in Jesus' name.